Right from the beginning, when we started out in 1989, we immediately, immediately realized that drilling a manifold was a bad idea. We immediately did, because the minute we started doing two drop manifolds, we had problems with the plugs lining up. And we have seen over and over and over again, the few times that we've drilled manifold systems, we actually had to go back and make new ones, vacuum brays, because the companies noticed a difference between higher injection pressures, holdup areas, lack of balance, or just inferior technology that allowed them not to get what they expect out of the system. This is a real gun drill. This is a very short gun drill. These things can be two, three, four feet long, so you get the idea. The way that they gun drill a manifold, our competitors do it, they put a start hole in one end of the manifold right here. Then what they do is they come through with a gun drill, they enter it into the hole, and they, tend to, and they start to drill. As they drill through this block, this drill does not track straight. It can go up, down, left, right. And the problem is when it comes out the other side, it doesn't line up with this side of it. And that's where the problem actually occurs. Gun drilled manifolds, the technology that's used has really been since the inception of hot runner manufacturing. Uh, it, is, it is used that the technique is a gun drill machine. A gun drill machine, regardless of quality, uh, it, the best that it can achieve is a, a one thou per inch variance on the length of the drill. So if the manifold channel is produced either from drilling on either ends of a large manifold or 90 degree turns, it's nearly impossible to have a perfect matchup of those flow channels. When you have a mismatch, you lead into process problems, mostly showing up in material degradation and color change issues. We know from science, plastic flows in a laminar fashion. And the laminate layers nearest the outer edge of that flow channel realize the highest shear condition. So when that laminar section would flow over a mismatched position in that manifold system, it's going to intensify the opportunity for black specks because uh, of that impingement. It's also going to be a, a spot or a dead spot for color change issues. So even though there are technique to try to eliminate color change issues, and there's technique, as I'm sure you're aware of, in, in terms of process change temperatures and, and pressure changes and velocity changes, you often can't get rid of all of it. If you don't have the problem that's manifesting that to begin with, you have a tremendous advantage in processing. To be able to fuse two plates together that have had machining of the flow channels from a vertical machine means that you really have no restriction to geometry. You also have a, a tremendous improvement advantage because you will never have a mismatch. You can, you can see the channel. So not only do you eliminate the mismatch, but you provide an opportunity to artificial balance in the same way that you would in producing a cold runner. In my opinion, of uh, 40 years in the industry, I would say that the ability to vacuum braze hot runner manifolds is the single largest innovation in 25 years of hot runner manufacturing. Well, I think the better way to answer that question is to go back to the processor and say, at what level can they afford not to use the, the better levels of technology? Um, if you don't have an ability to produce your part in a quality application, the cost is phenomenal. You you lose customers that way. So I'm I'm certain that there is an additional cost to uh, use a better quality steel. I'm sure there's an additional cost to vacuum braze a manifold versus traditional gun drilling. But if you are using that in the right application, I'm certain that the market is going to accept that because you eliminate all the process flaws that gun drill manifolds produce.
it's really important for molders to realize they don't sell molded parts. They sell their time. A molder's goal is to produce as many parts as they can that are sellable to the customer every 24 hours. So if a hot runner, if you can design a hot runner system that is so much better and so much more balanced and doesn't have hot spots and doesn't burn and it can produce a part 24 hours a day, seven days a week consistently, it costs less to own the system, which basically means they're not having to stop the system and get it cindered because the polycarbon has degraded in the turn plugs. They don't have to worry about somebody removing a turn plug and putting it in wrong. We don't use turn plugs. They don't have to worry about um, a valve gate pin uh, galling up a diameter because we use hardening ground nozzles, hardening ground valve gate pins. Everything is designed for PolyShot Hot Runner system the way it should be designed. We never designed any PolyShot product for cost. It was always designed what's the best way for a molder to get the most parts he can in one day. Right. Too many customers have, learned, have, have, be, have accepted an inferior hot runner system and allowed that to be the standard. It isn't the standard. PolyShot has pushed the envelope far past the largest hot runner companies in the world. Far past. They're not even close.